since I've done a book review, and today I am talking about Picnic in the Storm by Yukiko Motoya. Interesting cover, which is what attracted me to it first. It's a collection of uh, short stories by a female Japanese writer. This is her picture, she's really cute. And uh, on the cover it says it's playful, eerie, and utterly enchanting. And enchanting is really the right word to describe this book. It just got weirder and weirder the longer I read it. I bought this book without knowing a single thing about the author or any of the short stories. Uh, I just saw it won a prize and I was like, okay, let's check it out. I read it in seven days, so today is Saturday and I bought it last Saturday. And uh, I spent about 20 to 30 minutes each day on the subway reading it, so my commute to and from work. I would say the collection had just the right amount of fantasy or strange elements to keep me engrossed and uh, not too much to, to put me off. All of the short stories are extremely odd in the sense that strange, maybe fantasy elements happen, but the characters in the stories um, approach it as if it's the most normal thing. So it really puts you almost in an alternate reality, like a different world, where strange things happen like people's faces are able to morph and turn into other people's faces, or um, there are like monsters attacking supermarkets, and it's just taken as the most normal daily thing. Personally, I'm not really one for fantasy, and for many years I never really read fiction because I thought I was wasting my time with, you know, silly stories, but I recently started getting into Japanese fiction about maybe two years ago, and it has just been this crazy world of literature that really is thought-provoking, and what I like about it is, especially for Yuki Motoya, it's really a comment on Japanese society. If you read between the lines, you can see she um, speaks about the role of women in um, familial Japan, within, like within a family, what is the role of a woman or a wife, um, and in society. So a lot of her stories um, have main characters that are female, and the things that happen to them, it's very interesting to see how they react to that, how they are trying to oppress or oppose the system, but sometimes just fall back into, you know, the status quo or doing things the way women are supposed to act in Japan, culturally. Uh, it's not outright a feminist book or a, um, a book about, you know, women in Japanese society at all, but if you read between the lines, you can notice that she has some very interesting, strong female characters. I'm not going to tell you what happens in them, you're going to have to buy the book for yourself, but my favorite um, short stories from here are The Lonesome Bodybuilder, Fitting Room, I Called You By Name, and The Woman. Right at the end of the few stories at the back, it seemed that the book started off um, more normal and then as it progressed to the stories at the end it became more fant- no, I don't want to use the word fantasy but it became strange and enchanting. I would give the book about an 8 or an 8.5 out of 10 uh, because there were some stories that I absolutely didn't enjoy and um, there's one about dogs in the mountains. A lot of her short stories um, talk about animals and life and death and that was quite interesting for me. I've never really read short stories or books where animals are so prevalent, so that was new. I am not sure if I enjoyed it or not. I really think that the way the characters respond to strange situations happening, like uh, a shop assistant having somebody be in the fitting room, the changing room for uh, three hours and then five hours and then 24 hours and this person does not come out of the fitting room, um, how they respond to that is super interesting to me. Part of it is um, the Japanese psyche, so the specific story about the fitting room where this person is in the room for so long and they want to try it on everything in the store, the shop assistant actually goes out of their way to another store to buy clothes for them to try on in this store and she like feeds her and this lady just does not come out of the fitting room. You can see there are elements of Japanese culture in it that you do your utmost service to people, you go the extra mile to help them. If this lady's not coming out of the changing room, you will feed her, you will bring her clothes from another store just to keep the clients and the customer happy. That was very interesting for me. And uh, all of the stories kind of make me question reality, the, the comments on what is normal, what is accepted. And I'm very interested in how she portrays um, marriage and family units, so the relationship between a husband and a wife in Japanese society, and how in one of the stories the, the roles of the traditional 
uh, wife and traditional husband kind of switch at the end and the husband starts cooking for this lady and she's, she's the one who sits in front of the TV and watches these shows where she used to complain about her husband doing that. And it all transitions so, so strangely and, and so naturally. Excellent read, very strange. I don't know what to do with myself now. Um, but that's about it. I don't want to spoil it for you, but check it out if you are interested. Also, if you live in Singapore and you want to do a book trade, please let me know. I um, would like to give this book away in exchange for a book that you have read, maybe. So yeah, if you want to meet up in Singapore, please let me know and let's trade books. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!